All right, it is 7.33 p.m. Um, yep, 7.33 p.m. on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022. Um, <clears throat> and this is the meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Good evening, my name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'd like to call this meeting of the board to order. Uh, first, I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon? Here. Kevin Mills? Here. Uh, Daniel Riccadelli? Here. And Venkat Holly? Yes. Oh, good evening to all. Uh, appearing on behalf of the town, uh, Rick Ballarelli? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. And uh, I see Vincent Lee is with us as well. Here. Glad to have you. Um, I don't believe there's anyone else specifically from the town with us. <clears throat> um, is, and then is Mr. Anessi joining us? Let's see him on. So he- He was um, hoping to avoid it. Yeah, so uh, uh, Robert Anessi is the attorney for 1113 uh, Lowell Street, um, but we are going to be continuing on that case. Um, is Mr. Pointer here on behalf of 108 Pleasant Street? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Very good. Thank you for joining us. And then I don't know um, if Ms. Ben is present on behalf of 25 Highland Avenue. She may not be because that will be continued this evening as well. Okay. <clears throat> so this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This act includes an extension until April 1st, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom app with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Other participants are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. And as the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following planned acknowledgement. <clears throat> Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotony, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and to their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. Turning to our agenda for this evening. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chairman, can I make a, uh, can I ask a question, please? Uh, Mr. Moore? Uh, please. Just briefly, I've tried to access the agenda online a couple times. I'm getting regular errors. Is there some problem with the service that other people are experiencing as well? That is a very good question. I thought, I, I thought maybe it was I, just I, my machine or a temporary error, but it's happened repeatedly now and I can't access the agenda at all. 
I can't. Oh. Can you? Uh, Mr. Lee, are you aware of any issues with that? Uh, I am not, but I'm going to look into it right now. Let me go check it out. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Oh, I, I, I see it. Yeah. When I access it through the town's website, that it does go to an error. Um, Is there another way to access it that I should use then? Um, <clears throat> not that I'm aware of. I have a, I have a sort of a supervisor's access. Um, right as chair of the board, but unfortunately that doesn't help you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was on it earlier and I had no issues um, must oh. have between then and now, so we'll check it out. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I apologize for that. I was unaware that that was, that was the situation. Um, <clears throat> on the agenda for this evening, there are five items. Uh, there's two administrative items. One is the remote participation details, which we've already covered. And the second is, um, which we're moving to now, is the approval of a special permit decision for 25 uh, Highland Avenue. And then we have three hearings on the docket. One is 108 Pleasant Street. Uh, one is 1113 Lowell Street. And the third is 25 Highland Avenue, the variance, as opposed to the special permit. Um, <clears throat> And those are the five items that are on our agenda for this evening. So moving on to agenda item number two, which is the approval of the special permit decision for 25 Highland Avenue. Um, this was uh, written by uh, Patrick Hanlon and distributed to the board yesterday for comment. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that uh, was we received comment on that and it was redistributed this afternoon. And um, are there any further questions or comments on the decision for 25 Highland Avenue? Um, seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the final decision for the special permit application for 25 Highland Avenue? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I move that the application for 3677 Docket number 3677, 25 Highland Avenue uh, for the special permit only uh, be approved. Thank you, Mr. Hamlin. May I have a second on that? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. All those in, uh, do a roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Rigardelli? Aye. Chair votes aye. That is approved. Um, that brings us <clears throat> to item number three. But before we move on to that, um, we do have another question, which may be in relation to the agenda itself. Uh, Mr. Loretti? Sir Loretti, did you have a question in regards to the agenda? You are on mute, but your hand is raised. Sorry, can you hear me now, Mr. Chairman? I can. Sorry, I just wanted to say I got that error too when I first tried to get to the agenda. If you highlight the web address in your browser and return again, you get the normal um, list of agendas in, in, in minutes. So oh. um, there's some problem in getting to it, but you can. I just wanted to mention that to anyone who's having difficulty. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, yeah, I can get to the list, but when you try and get to the actual agenda, download or online, it gets the error. I can get to the listing, fine. But, but thank you, Ms. Loretti. That's uh, I appreciate other people looking into it too. Yeah, it worked for me when I clicked on online agenda. I'm getting things. Okay. Thank you. It sounds like it's just me then. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to quickly take two items out of order uh, just because they are quick votes um, and we can close those items for this evening. Um, the first is uh, item number four on our agenda, which is docket 3687, 11 through 13 Lowell Street. Um, there was a request for a continuance 
uh, by the applicant and the board um, <clears throat> would like to encourage the board to go ahead and approve that continuance. Um, and speaking with the applicant, uh, there have been some recent developments in regards to uh, how the case was initially applied for and the timeline thereof. And so they have requested some additional time to look into that. Um, the board has 100 days in order to hear an appeal to the decision of the building inspector and that 100 day period expires on March 11th. So um, working with the applicant, we've agreed to extend that period by 30 days so that we can continue this hearing. Um, so I would <clears throat> move that we continue um, the case in regards to 1113 Lowell Street until Tuesday, March 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on that. Um, going to item number five, uh, docket 3677, 25 Highland Avenue, the variance application. Uh, there's an additional piece of information we've been seeking for several months. It has uh, still not been made available and so we are continue we are looking to continue um so i move that we continue on the variance hearing for 25 highland avenue second thank you mr hanlon is there a date certain on that mr chairman um i apologize yes thank you to um to continue to tuesday march 22nd at 7 30 p.m thank you mr dupont uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye, so we are continued on that item. So then I will return to uh, docket 3678, 108 Pleasant Street. Um, <clears throat> So now turning to public hearings on tonight's agenda, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves, make their presentation to the board. Request that members of the board have, ask what questions they have on their proposal. And after the board's questions have been answered, I'll open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of the public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. So with that, I would invite- Mr. Uh, Chairman. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Coiner to introduce himself and to tell us what he would like to do. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, I have a point of procedure that uh, that I'd like to raise before the board before Mr. Coiner addresses us. Um, and it might be helpful if you could give me permission to share my screen. Um, absolutely. Um, Rick, can you take care of that for us? We can do that. Oops. Should be good, Mr. Hamlin. Let me try again. Well, it seems like it is. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, share. Got it. Um, so is everybody is everybody actually seeing a screen that says section 15 on it? We yes. are. Okay. So here <clears throat> the section 15. Uh, of the chapter 48, the Zoning Enabling Act establishes the procedure uh, for uh, granting, for appealing a decision uh, of the, of the uh, building inspector. Uh, and I would like to, before we get into any merits on the he hearing, if we are, uh, have any factual questions that are outstanding, but the record that we have before us does not indicate that the procedural re prerequisites for actually having a hearing have been met. And I question whether we actually have the jurisdiction to proceed with the hearing tonight. Uh, the appeal uh, should be, have been uh, initiated within 30 days of the order that was is being appealed from. 
and we don't really know what that order is at this point. Um, uh, and that is jurisdictional. The notice of appeal is supposed to be filed with the town clerk who will certify uh, the time and date on which it was filed, which is important because there are strict timelines which are jurisdictional in this en entire area. The notice certified by the town clerk is supposed to be filed by the petitioner with the board whose, whose appeal, whose decision is being appealed, which here would be ISD. Um, and then ISD would have an obligation to assemble the record to include all of the documentation that exists um, and to provide it to us so that we would have some idea what's going on. Instead, we have a, a notice as, this, as if this were a special uh, permit, and we have a special permit application that has been filled out. Uh, we don't know exactly what the decision is that is being appealed or when that decision was made, and we don't have anything that really counts as the proper way of initiating an appeal. Um, it seems to me that, that we ought to be turning square corners here. Uh, it's, we create all kinds of problems for ourselves if we start having hearings when we don't even have a proper application before us. And the way in which the state statute sets this up means that when we actually do have a hearing, we have a record that tells us what's going on and provides all of the facts before us. And we don't have that now. We have something that is not directly relevant for appeal at all. And it seems to me that having a hearing under these circumstances, taking oral testimony on what may or may not have happened, when we don't have the documents, we can't ask questions about it, uh, is, is a mistake. Uh, and I would think that the uh, best way to proceed there is to con is to continue this on the docket, uh, just so that we don't do anything fundamentally wrong. Although I think ultimately this needs to be dismissed and give the applicant an opportunity to initiate an appeal in the proper way, and to require the uh, inspectional services department uh, to meet its obligation upon receiving notice of it to provide us with. Uh, a record that we can that we can evaluate. Well, thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Um, <clears throat> I have been trying, and uh, I'm sure Mr. Bellarella can attest to this as well. I've been trying to get inspect from Inspectional Services um, a statement in regards to exactly what their decision was that is being appealed. Um, and we have not received uh, that statement. Um, and I certainly under, understand the, uh, the points that you have brought up in regards to this. Um, is your sense that, and I would certainly appeal to the other um, uh, members of the board with legal background, what their sense is in regards to proceeding uh, or whether we need to continue um, immediately? Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I think the other members of the board with a legal background would be me. Uh, <laughs> well, so, that's true. We have, we have made that singular rather than plural. So uh, anyway, um, you know, when I was reading this, and, and I think uh, if I heard Mr. Hanlon correctly, that this was filed on an application for a special permit. I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't have it in front of me. Was that accurate? Mr. Um, Chairman. I'm Mr. Sorry. Hanlon. The, what we have before us is a regular notice, that, that is to say the application that is before us. It's a regular notice of an appeal that is published in the advocate. Uh, and when you turn underneath it, unless I'm being very much mistaken about what's there, uh, what we have is an application for a special permit that fills out the form that we have for applications for a special permit. Um, and and that's that's what was done. Now, what was supposed to be done is filing a, an appeal, a notice of appeal with the uh, town clerk and going through the process that ultimately results in our having all of the documents relating to this, all the correspondence and whatever um, before us at the time that we hear the, the appeal. To me, this is a lot like having a hearing in a, in a, in a civil action when nobody's actually filed a civil action. And 
uh, in both in its practical terms and in terms of, of jurisdiction, I don't think that we have the ability to do that. So Mr. Chairman, so I, I would just go on and add that, you know, based upon uh, what Mr. Hanlon had just said, I, I'm in agreement that I don't think that we really have enough of a basis to move forward. And the other point I would make and perhaps uh, offer to the applicant is, you know, if in fact this is not truly an appeal, um, I guess the question is in what other um, way can relief be sought? And I'm not saying one way or the other whether it would be successful, but it does seem to me that considering it or at least consider filing as a special permit application might be worth considering. So I'm just throwing that out. I don't know enough about the appeal issue to have a real, you know, have a real opinion. But when I was looking at the materials originally, I was wondering about why it was not uh, you know, applied for as a special permit. <clears throat> well, uh, unless there's a, a reason not to, I would like to hear from the, the applicant just to clarify what the nature of um, the appeal is. So the board can get a, at least get a, a basic understanding and the public can get a basic understanding of what the, um, of what the issues might be. And then I would recommend that we then um, continue so that we can uh, get further clarification from uh, and inspectional services and we can move this forward. Is there any objection to proceeding along those lines? Mr. Chairman, yes, I don't really object to proceeding along those lines, but I, I do think that if this is in fact an appeal, if that's the nature of what we have before us, um, that the problem goes beyond asking inspectional services either for a statement of what their basis is or anything like that. Um, we have in the other case that we had that we continued an insistence by inspectional services itself on strict compliance with the requirements of section 15. And I think that includes all of them and that we just need to follow state law in the way in which the uh, these things are filed and uh, uh, and heard. So if it is in fact the nature of it is that it's an appeal, then it seems to me that the applicant should be filing something with the town clerk, a notice of appeal expressing what it is, and we should just go through what. The reason I put this on the screen was so that everybody could see what the statute requires. Uh, and I think that the statute should be complied with and that we, it's dangerous for us to begin, you know, not turning square corners on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we should insist on the procedure that is set forth in the state statute actually being followed. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> then with that, um, if I could ask Mr. Coiner to um, yes. tell us ex exactly what, uh, what his understanding of the of the sort of the nature of his application is, and um, what he had requested to do, and what he has been advised. Good evening. Can you hear me? We can, sir. Okay, I'm Carl Coiner. I'm the owner of 108, and I am uh, appealing to get a special permit or allowance or variance, however you would call it, to allow me to expand the number of units within that building. So I have just a short presentation and I'm just gonna bring you up to date as to where the building stands and why I'm asking. Uh, so have you applied for a building permit? Yes, I have a building permit. Do you have a building permit? Yes. What does the building permit cover? It covers um, rehabbing of the building. And okay. Just uh, uh, construction. And we've been working under that permit for two, three years, two, two to three years now. Okay. And then your application to the board, is it in regards to a determination from the building inspector that you're not able to do something you have intended to do? No, it's, we had intended to have three units. It's an R4 zoning 
which allows two by right, and we have to ask a permit for a permit to have three units. Okay. Okay, so in that case, <clears throat> three units are allowed as a special permit. Um, and it, was that your intention to apply for a special permit for three units? Yes, at this point, three units, possibly more, but for right now, three. And Mr. Valarelli, um, so within the existing, so for this project, is there any reason that he cannot apply for a special permit for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for three units? Uh, correct, uh, Mr. Chairman. So I just went online to look at permit search and um, I, this, this whole uh, property is new to me, other than okay. research I did in preparation for tonight, anticipating the questions the board might, might be asking on behalf of its special services. So in the permit system, I see that two permits were issued uh, for two units only, seeing nothing about a third. Okay. So our zoning allows a, a third unit in an R4 district um, by special permit. So that's what brought Mr. Coiner to the board. Uh, so Mr. Um, Hamlin raises uh, a good point, which the board will have to take from there. So I do not see uh, that a permit was issued for a third unit. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's what the applicant is asking for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Mr. Hamlin is raising a different direction and, and it's up to the board to tell IST what to do going forward from here. Okay. So I, I think the confusion is that the legal notice states that it's an appeal from the building inspector? Yeah, so that, that is derived from uh, the fact that the app, now I'm going on assumptions, I would assume uh, that the, the applicant asked for a third unit yeah. and the building, uh, the chief, um, uh, the chief uh, zoning official, which is the building commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, denied it. However, uh, the uh, zoning bylaw uh, section 5.4.3 allows uh, a third unit in an R4 district by way of special permit. So I, I would take a shot and say that the applicant was given um, a permit to renovate two units right away okay. by right, and then uh, requesting a special permit to, to increase the um, units to a third. So then the, the bigger question then becomes, whereas this was advertised as an appeal from the building inspector, but it's really a request for a special permit, are we able to proceed under the notice that was provided or do it, does this need to be re-noticed? Historically, Mr. Chairman, when the uh, Chief Zoning Enforcement Officer, Building Commissioner, denied a permit, it was advertised as such. Um, I think uh, that's for advertising purposes. If we can dig into it, which we're doing tonight, we will, we're finding the reason why the applicant did, in fact, apply for a special permit, because the Building Commissioner basically said no. So he is uh, challenging that decision. He has the right to under 543. Uh, so I think ISD is looking for direction here as well going forward. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, I wonder if Mr. Valeretti can, I'm a little bit unclear as to whether or not the inspector we, in almost every case that we have that's a special permit, in fact, in every case where there's a special permit, uh, the building inspector either has or would deny proceeding without one. And so I'm, wonder, I'm wondering if, is, is, is there an issue here? Yeah. Maybe Mr. Coiner could tell us. Is there an issue that Mr. Coiner says he ought to be able to proceed without a special permit? Or is 
I mean, it's beginning to sound as if this ought to be just a garden variety special permit case. Uh, my understanding is there's no problem. I'm not in touch with the various uh, inspectors and town governance, but my understanding is there's no issues outstanding. Uh, we proceeded under the permit to create two apartments. I've got nine, over 9,000 square feet of area to work with. And uh, my understanding is I would just be asking for a special permit to create three units. And then at a later date, a special permit for four units, and then eventually a special permit for five units. So I guess the, so I think it brings us back, I think, to the question that the chairman asked is that if this, there wouldn't be any difficulty if this had been advertised as a special permit case. We'd be having a hearing, everybody would know what the rules were, and we would proceed on the basis of the information that we normally have, which is basically what was provided here. Um, and so the notice is wrong in the sense that that this isn't really an, ap an appeal of a decision of the building inspector. This is really an application for a special permit. Uh, and I guess the question is, couldn't we just sort of say, well, that is, shouldn't keep us from hearing this tonight or whether we uh, should continue this for a month and then have a proper special permit hearing. I guess the only thing that troubles me a little bit is that, is that the rules are so different on on what a special permit is that I'm not sure that the public has had adequate notice of what, or the, for that matter, we haven't had adequate notice of what's actually before us. Uh, but if it is, I mean, I don't wanna waste everyone's time. And if we can proceed on the basis that it's a special permit and everybody is ready for that, um, then then maybe that's, that's better. I, I don't think that's a, a legal thing unless we're in a situation where where the notice is incorrect i mean where the notice is incorrect in a way that that uh, uh that infects the whole proceeding mr chairman dupont so i would just say that <clears throat> with all due respect to the applicant because i understand the desire to have things addressed expeditiously. I was looking at this in a different light than I would have had I known it was a special permit to begin with. And I think I may have different questions in the event that it is characterized as a special permit. The other thing based upon Mr. Coiner's comments uh, is that, you know, when he said, you know, he may be looking for you know, a fourth and then a fifth unit, I think that that's something that he would need to uh, take into consideration if he's going to come to us, because I honestly don't see that as an option under the section 5.4.3 of the bylaw. But I'm not saying that that's all there is. Maybe there's some other provision that would permit that. But I, I do think that we need more definition, both in what it is that Mr. Coiner is looking for ultimately. And then I'd like a little bit more time to take a look at this sort of and view it as a special permit, because I really did not look at it through that lens. So my, I would be in favor of continuing this. Mr. Chairman, if, if I could just add one thing, yeah. if this, if, if everybody had known from the beginning that this was just a special <clears throat> permit, then we would, in addition to everything else, have a memorandum from the planning department explaining their position on it. And, and, and because of the way it's come up, we do not have that, that memorandum. And here, I think it would be helpful because it's a somewhat confused situation. I would certainly agree with that. <clears throat> With that in mind, does it make sense for the board to request that we re-advertise this um, as well as continuing? That it should be re-advertised as a special permit request? I think you should cover all the bases. Okay. 
Mr. Valerelli, is there any problem with doing that? No, I have just enough time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I can advertise this and um, it, it will go through the proper course and the proper time and we'll be okay for March 22nd if we're looking at that date. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so with, with that in mind, March, so March 22nd now, this would be the, we currently have four other items on the agenda for that evening. Um, so would we want to continue on that date or would we want, to, oh, well, actually we won't have time to advertise for an earlier date, I apologize. Um, so we would be sticking with the 22nd as the, as the possible date for continuation. Um, so, so Mr. Coiner, just, um, I just wanna make sure, do you understand the sort of the nature of our conundrum here and what we are proposing to do? No, I don't understand, but I will just follow what you're saying. Okay, so essentially uh, the advertisement that was placed was that this was an appeal for the decision of the building inspector when it's really um, a request for a special permit, which is actually well, covered in a, the request of the building. I, I wasn't, Mr. Chairman, I wasn't made aware of this internal mm -hmm. workings of the uh, inspection being denied. This is the first I've heard of this. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not exactly sure why the notice went out the way it did. Um, but unfortunately, because of the way it, it did go out, um, it creates a, you know, an, an issue for the board and that it wasn't properly noticed. Um, and so if, with your indulgence, we would like to continue uh, this hearing until March 22nd. Um, and in the meantime, inspectional services will, will properly uh, notice the, the public about the nature of the request, which is a, a special permit, uh, um, and that the board will receive guidance from the planning department, um, where they will review uh, the property. They'll review the the zone, the issues um, that are brought up as a part of the decision for a special permit, and then uh, we, when we reconvene, we'll have sort of all the information in front of us. We'll be able to proceed in a much more uh, forthright manner. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, just in, in other cases where things have been a little hard to understand, uh, Mr. Valorelli has frequently worked with the applicant to get things clear and to make it and, and, and to make things all work well. He's super at doing that. And uh, I'd hope that that he might be able to help Mr. Coiner out so that so that we can proceed in an efficient in an effective way. That's not a problem, Mr. Hand would be happy to. Mr. Valerelli. Any further questions from the board? With that in mind, then, um, after the discussion we've had, I would move that the board continue um, the hearing in regards to 108 Pleasant Street so that it may be re-noticed as a special permit and be reheard on Tuesday, March 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, any questions from the board? Okay, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So we are continued on 108 Pleasant Street. And that was the final piece of business we had this evening. Uh, so as we have stated a couple of times uh, this evening, our next meeting is Tuesday, March 22nd at 7.30 p.m., where we will be discussing uh, two new applications. One is 46 River Street, one is 44 Edmund Road. And then we have the three uh, hearings which were continued continued from this evening, one being 1113 Lowell Street, one being 108 Pleasant Street, and the third being 25 Highland Avenue. Uh, and so those will all be coming up on Tuesday, March 22nd at 7.30 p.m.
So thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. Especially wish to thank Rick Valorelli, Vincent Lee, and everyone else for their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And so to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. I moved. Thank you. Mr. Hanlon. Second. Uh, second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Vote of the board. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. Mr. Holly. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I ask Mr. Hanlon a question, please? Rick Valorelli. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Hanlon, first of all, thank you for drafting that decision. I, I just don't know if um, everybody knows how much time that takes. So is it fair to me to say that the decision that was approved tonight is the clean copy and I can send that signature page off for DocuSign? Yes, I've taken the draft watermark off. And... Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. If, if, um, if the board would look for that in their uh, email, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Good night, guys. Thank you, guys. Good night. Thank, Thank you all. Bye.